Economics for Many. This was an article that I was recommended to check out and it's on John McDonnell and his views of economics. I will leave the article in the description area below so that you can read it for yourself. And of course, I will touch upon some of the main points of the article and my view of what he proposes. So the article starts off by mentioning the UK economy being stagnant since the global financial crisis. However, it is important to note that the out of price range households is a result of the immigration crisis in relation to do with the laws of supply and demand. It also mentions, of course, the cuts to public services. And this is John McDonald's proposal for how to tackle these problems with regards to economics. So let's take a look at a few of these arguments. As the article goes on to explain, the book seeks a plan to build a radically fairer and more sustainable society in which wealth is shared by all. Ambitions include changing the ownership of companies. This is really just a fancier way of saying that he's going to abolish the private ownership of property. You would no longer have the incentives, you, you, you wouldn't even have the rights to start up your own private company. You wouldn't be able to own it. The other problem with that is the very fact that it takes away the innovation in the marketplace because there could be someone who sees a gap in the market and wishes to provide a service that could potentially benefit customers. You could see this for example in many private companies. I remember a private company who came up with the idea of producing, you know, cards. I think it was moonpig.com or something. And there was even, you know, Uber, the taxi service. All of that came around because of the freedom of individuals to own their own property, to essentially create business. And it was through the company owner, the one who created the business from their ideas that essentially enabled this to come around. Another thing you could go into, there are those who are competent and those who are incompetent. Yes, you would require a competent leader of a business in order to make it efficient. Now, another fear would go down the road of continuing on with bailouts. You can see what they would attempt to do, even if it's so-called private companies. I say so-called because it wouldn't be. What they would do is they would try to you know, bail failure out, continue to bail failure out. They, they, they have no understanding of the marketplace. There is no guaranteed success of private companies, of business in the marketplace. That's not something that is guaranteed in capitalism because at the end of the day, you have businesses which fail because of incompetency and those which succeed because they are more competent, led by more competent business owners. But we'll move on to what he also um, wishes to propose. As it states, ending short-termism in the financial sector, a program of green investment and much greater regional devolution of state powers. The short-termism in the financial sector is really just a way of saying that they want to force long-term investment. First understand that investors have a risk to take and a return. The government would take away the risk, okay? If you were an investor and you've got your own money, your own income, you're going to take a risk with your money facing the potential that whatever you invest in, you are going to make a loss, right? You face that risk because there's no guarantee that whatever you invest in is essentially going to make a profit. Now, there's an excellent um, argument made by Peterson. He speaks about the very problems that you would be faced with. I mean, what are we going to do? Are we going to just get rid of our central heating? The whole issue with the green investment is there's no substantial amount of evidence there to say that we are causing this severe damage. It's going to end the planet Earth and all the rest of this. I've always stood in the position that yes, 
that when it comes to global warming, that climate change, I do believe, yes, we should look after our, env our environment. However, I believe that it is really all down to the fact it's a time cycle. For the past 400,000 years, you could pretty much see this. When it comes to investors and investment in general, it's down to the investor what they see as valuable in terms of what they take the risk in an investment. An investor would not invest in something that they know they would make losses from. They know it's not profitable, so they would not make an investment. There's no financial sense in doing so. And they always have the second thing from risk is the return. They want to make sure that they're going to make a return on the investment that they make. Taking the risk away and saying to the investors, we will guarantee you an income or we will guarantee you profit by taking away your risk. So long as you invest in this green energy and this, this green investment project of ours, we will guarantee you profit because we will force the taxpayer of society to basically pay for it. Now another part of the article that got me is it mentions some passages enthuse about the freedoms to be gained from leaving the EU, while others insist that Britain should join a federal European project for a common corporate tax base. That's a problem because one of the main reasons why the European Union fails within itself is because you had a central bank that would set one, you know, interest rate across all the various different countries. And all the various different countries have their different tax and spend policies. So again, again, this communist just doesn't understand that things are not as simple as that. Because each and every single one of those individual countries all have their own tax and spend policies. So it's impossible to sit there and say that you will create this one federal European project in the name of one corporate tax base. It would benefit some countries and then it would harm many of the other countries, in my opinion. So I want to know what your personal opinion on that issue is. Because I would be interested to see what your point of view is. Maybe I'm picking that up wrong. It does mention, of course, that he has complete disregard for facts. But what caught my eye was a following statement. And it says, Fellow travellers must oppose austerity, financialization, and neoliberalism. Now, first of all, austerity. The word austerity, what does it mean to be austere? To be austere is to live within your means. That's what it means. You cannot, for the life of you, sit there with an £18 billion deficit, which Great Britain no doubt currently still has. I know that there's a deficit still in place. So long as you have a deficit, a deficit means you're overspending by that certain amount. Now, last time I checked, I think it was at about... £18 billion pounds for the budget deficit. Now, £18 billion pounds means you're overspending by £18 billion. Pounds. If you're overspending by £18 billion, pounds, you're not austere, meaning you're not living within your means. You take away the rights of individuals to owning their own private company, like I explained earlier. Investors wouldn't come near your country. They would flock, they would leave the country. But as it goes on to mention, financialization and neoliberalism. This word neoliberalism, we always see this. Whatever the hell neoliberalism is, it's just a made up word, made up by the left on something as if to say that this is capitalism. The fact of the matter is, this has nothing at all to do with capitalism. But it also says, while rising to the challenge of radical democratic ownership of the means of production. Yes, the radical democratic ownership of the means of production where they radically, forcibly remove your individual private property rights. Fantastic. Let's just 
resort to more collectivism that would result in, well, the decimation of the economy. You would drive investors out of the economy, as I mentioned before. So, overall, that is my own personal view of the article. I will leave the article in the description area below and you can, you know, draw to your own conclusions on it. I would like to see your own personal opinions on what you personally think, what you have to say, if there's anything you would like to correct or even have to, you know, state your opinion, comment in the comment section below. Be sure to like the video, share the video, favourite the video and of course, thank you for watching and I shall talk to you later. Cheers.